All right, guys, so I just got to my renter's complex to take a look at what happened in my car, to my car. And just to remind you guys, this is a guard-gated community. So, here it is. And this is in the city of Irvine, fourth floor, gated parking structure, super hard to get into. And the renter woke up, came out to the car, and this is how he found it. And the car was left on these really crappy bricks, which is obviously damaging right there. I'll take you guys around to the other side. So I'm about to put some temporary wheels on it and these cheap bastards couldn't even put four blocks under the car. They only use three. So that's a first. They did leave the lug nuts for whatever reason. So the renter was nice enough to throw those in the back seat for me. So I'll use those, get the temporary rims on, wheels and rims on, and then get out of here. Just craziness. And this wasn't the only car on this floor that got jacked. There was another car actually parked right down there. He said that that car was just moved. Um, but I guess this is a crime ring that's been going on in the city for a couple years now. And one more thing that I should mention is the one thing that's been in common with all of these thefts are that they go specifically after Mercedes-Benz AMG rims. I heard because it has something to do with the fact that they're made out of magnesium, but I'm not really 100% sure. So just be careful out there. But this is a first in the five years of me doing Turo and I've had Mercedes-Benz's for, I think since the very beginning almost. This has never happened before. And it's also crazy because this renter literally lives just right down the street from me, like a rock throw away. And you just, this type of stuff doesn't usually happen in this area. So crazy times, especially for someone to do something like this at a time like this, wild. Um, the best wheel and tire place. New Year's chrome plating, wheel repair, powder coating. That's the owner. They service hundreds of dealerships and businesses and they're absolutely amazing. I've been coming here for years. So pulled out one of the bricks and the side skirt is definitely damaged and it's damaged in all the spots. As you can see, it's like dented. So I'm gonna have to add that to the claim for those repairs. Still have yet to remove this one, but it's probably gonna be a similar situation. At least these thieves left behind the lug nuts, which I think those are like $8 a piece. So thank you thieves for at least doing that much. All right guys, so now that you've seen what's happened to my car, let me walk you through the timeline of how things progressed, what the response was from support, and what my initial settlement numbers look like for the theft of the rims and tires. Okay, so this incident took place Friday morning, March 20th, so that was a couple of days ago. My renter contacted me right away. He was a super awesome guy and it's always so much easier to deal with these situations when you have somebody on the other end who is really willing to help and also just caring, I guess you could say. And this renter was exactly that. He took it upon himself to call the cops. He filed the report with Irvine PD. He met with the cops and he actually filed the claim on his end as well without any guidance from me. So that was really cool. Um, simultaneously that weekend, I had filed a claim as well. So it's funny because we both did it. Um, and that's what sort of prompted, I guess, that automated message that I received through the messaging. And if you guys want, actually I can, now that I have my computer, I can read it up 
read it for you guys. But while I pull that up, um, on Friday when he initially contacted me, you know, his first message for me was, what do I need to do in terms of Turo? So I did give him Turo's phone number. I said, you know, you need to get in touch with their emergency line and they'll walk you through what to do in this situation, especially because a situation like this, I was super unfamiliar with. I mean, in most situations, I can pretty much troubleshoot it on my own. And you know, if a tow needs to be set up, I can either advise them to use their triple A if they have triple A to save money or if I um, I can recommend them a towing company that I've worked with or I recommend them to Turo's emergency roadside assistance so that they can set that up but unfortunately this wasn't one of those cases so I could not recommend those things um, in this scenario so I had to just give them his their number so that he can get in touch with them but Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he was not able to get any support from Turo in terms of what he was supposed to do in that situation. Um, and then same thing for me as well. Then the next time that I heard anything back from Turo was on Tuesday and that was through my claims being processed. Um, and so that was the initial sort of acknowledgement of the claim. Um, just checking all the boxes, all the photos were there and everything that needed um, to get the claim filed. And then actually by Tuesday evening, I had received the first sort of settlement figures for the claim and the figures were really interesting to say, to, to say the least. So the first um, numbers that came back was that the total claim was coming out to be just under $2,500. But over the weekend, I had already contacted my dealership, Fletcher Jones, which is where I got have got the car from, because um, obviously they, already, they have on file what the original rims were, and these were AMG rims, just to keep that in mind. Um, so I already knew what this was gonna cost, and it was not anywhere near $2,500, because those rims are quite expensive. So when I got the initial estimate back from Turo, they were valuing the new rims at $2.92 per rim, um, which is really crazy. You actually cannot even find, or you can barely find replica AMG rims for that price, let alone the actual original AMG rim for that car for that price. Um, and I did actually get back to my claims agent because on the actual estimate, it didn't even have a part number or where that rim was from that they quoted. So I had to get back to them and just ask like, where can I find this rim? that is the room that belongs to my car for 292 and they actually got back to me saying that they didn't know so that just goes to tell me that you know they definitely didn't quote that correctly but then again like i've said in all of my previous videos when you get these initial estimates don't worry you almost always have to file a supplement and and just get them the documentation that they need that shows what the actual cost is and then they kind of go through that and then they'll adjust the estimates. So that's exactly what I did. I had actually already submitted the initial um, the initial pricing for the repairs when I first filed the claim, but it doesn't look like they used that. They kind of went with their own, with Snapsheets estimate. And then um, I had to file the supplement again with the receipt that I had from the dealership where it showed that those rims are actually uh, between 1,000 to 1,100 per piece. No, I'm sorry. $1,400 to $1,500 per piece. Um, so they're quite expensive just because they are the AMG line rim. So I have that supplement currently pending. And then finally today, I did get an email back from claims because I had to ask twice like, hey, well, what am I supposed to do? The car doesn't have wheels. Like, how do we set up a tow? How do we get this car transported? And initially, I didn't get any response from them until today after asking twice. Um, and then they got back to me saying, that they could help set up a tow where the tow company would put temporary wheels on it and then take it to where I needed it to go. But by that time, I had already worked with um, my wheel and tire service provider who I have been working for with for a long, long time. I've done a lot of business with them and they were super nice and helpful in lending me some temporary wheels and tires so that I could go get this taken care of. Um, 
So that was really helpful. And I ended up just taking that route rather than trying to set up a toe. And that usually takes hours to do. And I just didn't want to waste that time anymore. And I wanted to get this car out of the renter's location because poor guy, it's been sitting in his parking spot ever since Friday. So for uh, how many days was that? Five, six days. Um, and he didn't even get to use it for the duration of his rental. So that's kind of where things are at right now. Um, I have the supplement pending. The car has temporary wheels and tires on it, which was lent to me by my wheel and tire guy. And now I'm just waiting for them to settle out the supplement so that I can actually go get the proper rims and tires on the car. So a really unique situation, one that I've never experienced before. And unfortunately in this situation, I think that support really fell short. Um, but hopefully, you know, in the end, as long as everything gets resolved, then that's all that really matters. Now, I wanted to touch upon some other support items that I have encountered in these last couple weeks. Now, I wanna clarify the things that I have not had issues with in terms of support have been um, some of the simpler stuff, such as reimbursements for late returns or cleaning fees, et cetera, and any type of trip modifications. I've noticed that their support has been pretty quick with that and have been able to very easily resolve that, so that's been good. Um, and so I wanted to give you guys an update on the two other issues that I came across that I spoke in the last video. One was the issue with billing, um, where the day rates are not calculating correctly on these reservations. So the one major one that I recently encountered last week is where I had a car for $30 a day, and when the guest modified the trip, it for whatever reason dropped the rate down to $13.33 per day. And I have zero discounts applied to that car, so it couldn't have applied anything from any of my settings. I did reach out to support um, Last week, actually, I had reached out to them. I didn't hear back uh, from anyone who could actually resolve it up until today. Today I heard back and they confirmed that it's been a glitch in their system and that their engineering team is working on it, which is yikes. Uh, that's kind of a major thing, especially at a time like this where us hosts like any money that we are making, like I want that money, you know? Um, and the sort of bummer part of that is that when I spoke with support, they said that they don't have an ETA on when it's gonna be resolved and when those funds will be released, which is, I don't know, that's just so crazy to me, you know? It's like, it's messing with my earnings and it's at no fault of my own, but yet I'm the one that has to pay the price because they don't know when the solution is going to go into effect and apparently they can't manually push the changes and I don't know why that is. So I currently have two trips that have experienced this and now I don't even know if it's happened to any other trips, but I'm gonna do a better job at checking that. And I know in the comment section, I've heard from a few of you guys who have caught that with some of your bookings. So please be uh, conscious of your trip bookings and just make sure that your day rates look accurate in your trip receipt, um, because this seems to be some kind of an issue going on. And finally, <laughs> another thing that happened was, um, let me actually look in my email when this happened. I got an email from Turo Support saying that there was an issue with one of my listings. Um, and this was on, let's see here. When was this? Shoot, okay, I can't find the original email, but I believe that this was over the weekend when this happened. I got an email saying that the images to my listing have text on it and that that's against their um, rules basically and that I have to make sure that I remove the text and the text that they're referring to is how my images say detailed and sanitized. And so I responded in a very nice way and I just explained that, hey, you know, like given the situation that we're going through right now, obviously unprecedented times, um, that's why I have placed this text on the images and it's just to reassure guests because 
images are that first point of contact, that first point of sale for people. They don't see your descriptions right away, but what they do see is the pictures, you know? And I wanna reassure anyone that's out there that's renting that they can really count on this platform having cars that are detailed and sanitized. So I asked if they could possibly make an exception at least for the next two weeks. And I even said like, we can even put a timeline on it. Like we can say, hey, by you know second week of March, you need to change your photos. So I asked if we can make an exception. Um, they got back to me and saying that unfortunately due to the terms of the listings that they cannot do that and that I would need to remove that. Otherwise my listings would be unlisted. And then I just responded back again in a very nice way and I just asked if the support agent that I was talking to could take it up with the supervisor and just see if an exception could be made just for the next two weeks and they got back to me and said that they can't do that and that I have to take down those images and not have any text on my photos. And that, my friends, is super frustrating. Um, I get, I 100% understand wanting to maintain the continuity of a platform and the images that are on there and making sure that everything looks uniform and it looks the part and it displays in a certain way. 100%, I agree with that on any normal given day that that is how it should be. There should not be text on images. But I think that, you know, in this time, given the severity of what we're going through and what hosts are experiencing on the platform, that they could have made that exception, um, but they have decided not to. So I do have to pull down those photos with that text. So for any of you guys out there who have done that, and I have seen other listings with that on there, this is just a heads up that if they see your listings, you will definitely get that message as well. And it doesn't seem like that's something that they're willing to budge on, which blows my mind because it's like, come on, like we're already not receiving any support from the platform as it is for the most part. And it's like, if a host is really trying to go above and beyond and serve a market during such a hard time, you would think that they would work with you in some type of way. But unfortunately that has not been the case. So. That is the update on support. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's looking pretty grim. Um, I hope that in the next week or two that things get better as Turo themselves as an organization kind of settle into this new situation that they're in. And I just feel like in a time like this, support is so crucial, especially when your platform relies on your host. Without a host, there is no platform. And if your hosts aren't being taken care of, then that's a real cause for concern. And it's really frustrating when you're already in a tough time. And then on top of that, you feel like you don't have the support from support. So that's just kind of where things are. I wanted to update you guys on those support items and what happened with this car. I will keep you guys posted if anything interesting pops up throughout the supplement process. And if you didn't know, you do have 45 days after um, a claim has been settled to file that supplement. So they do give you ample time to get that in. Um, but that's what happened in this case. So hopefully that's insightful for some of you guys out there. Do share with me what your guys' experiences have been lately. I know that there's not a lot of movement in the marketplace, but if you have encountered um, any instances where you've had to deal with support, how's your experience been? Has been good has it been bad has it been normal let me know it's really helpful for the community to kind of gauge where we are at as a whole so that we can plan accordingly um, with how we run our listings all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always if you like this channel please be sure to subscribe and show your support i am going to do my very best to continue bringing you guys updates with everything that's going on um, and hopefully really pull through in these next couple of weeks um, um, and other than that, that's it for me for tonight. Thanks for watching. Send me your questions and comments. Take care, guys. Stay healthy. Bye. Shoot. Sorry, guys. I forgot to read you that message, but this was the automated response that I received. It says, upon return, I found some damage on the vehicle. I understand these things happen, so I'd love to work with you directly to set out the cost of the damage. It'll be cheaper and faster than going through the claims process. And so that's when I responded, and the guy goes, that was an automated text. Ha ha. <laughs> Uh, very interesting.